A very good morning to you from wherever you are watching this content from. Many thanks for joining in from whatever platform, um, be it YouTube, Facebook, uh, even our KRA TV platform. You are watching How to Clear Goods from Abroad via the Post Office. My name is Caroline Suma. Now we are in times and era where we prefer shopping online. If not most of us, then all of us. But the goods that we ship in, we might not uh, get them as per the description we had bought them from our uh, suppliers. And that's why today we have our very own Jen Jaggi, our verification officer from Kenya Revenue Authority, who will explain in depthly to us what happens when our goods are not as per how we were expecting them to arrive. Remember to send in your comments and your questions from the platform you are tuning in from. We are for sure Jen will be answering those questions and we will appreciate your comments as well. Jen, thank you so much for accepting to talk to us. Uh, thank you very much, Caroline, for having me. It's a pleasure and I'm looking forward to a very interactive session. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we can just start off by asking, what is the procedure of importing an item in the country? So basically the procedure for importing an item into the country First of all, you need to liaise with the supplier from the foreign side. You need to place your order. Most, uh, most of the times it's usually online because uh, you're based in Kenya, the supply is based on the foreign side. So you place your order, uh, you liaise with the supplier, how the goods will be shipped, the various shipping terms will agree with the supplier. Then the goods will be shipped uh, through various methods, depending on which method you agree upon. And then the, when the goods come into the country, now they'll be subject to customs verification. Okay, and are there specific goods that um, we are advised to ship in via the post office? There's no, actually there's no specific goods, but uh, for the post office, mainly the goods that we receive, the quantity, li the weight limit is uh, 70 kg. Mm. So I think anything within that range should be okay to ship. And what is probably prohibited from shipping via the post office? So for post office, uh, the prohibited items are the items that are actually prohibited by the East African Community Customs Management Act. The list of pro uh, prohibited goods is provided under the second schedule. So that is what we will look at when we are determining this is what is prohibited and this is what is going to be allowed into country. So it is not like the customs officer who is going to determine like this is what is prohibited. No, it is actually we use the law to determine the prohibited goods. The law is the East African Community Customs Management Act under the second schedule. Mm -hmm. Normally, depending on whichever platform that I have shipped my item from, you get there is a tracker provided from me, right? Yeah. How accurate is this tracker? So for the accuracy of the trackingness, I really am not in a position to determine. I think that would be best determined by a postal personnel because they have a universal tracking system where they track all the goods from the foreign side, especially if they are sent by a post office from the other side. And uh, can I track my package if I don't have uh, a tracking number? <laughs> I really think a tracking number is necessary because that's what the postal personnel are going to key into their systems to check whether your package has arrived into the country. So maybe without the tracking number or without the, any details for the package, but the tracking number is actually what is a uh, key to tracking your package. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how is there a specific uh, number of days that goods... Um, will take to arrive in the country because you might find for some countries they take longer, for some countries they take shorter, or even depending with, with the, the, the means you have used to ship in your item. Now, is there a specific duration? <laughs> yeah. So there is, I'd not say there's a specific duration, like because uh, like you've said, Caroline, the, the arrival time might be determined by, let's say the mode of shipping, because if you ship your goods via the sea, they are going to take longer than if you use the air. So I don't think there's a specific time frame where you can say the goods are going to take like two weeks, 
it, it all depends on the method of shipping that you choose. Because if you choose like maybe, let's say, EMS, the goods will be shipped faster. So I think the shipping mode that you use is what is going to determine how soon your goods get here. You are a verification officer. Yes. What you can, maybe what is the process of verification? So I'll talk about the process of verification for post parcels because that's what mainly I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So the process of verification, uh, when the goods come from the foreign side, once they are received uh, by the postal personnel, we usually do the sorting process together with our customs enforcement uh, officers. So after the sorting process has been, has been done, we determine, like maybe based on the weight and based on the value, these ones will be subject to customs verification because uh, not all goods are subject to customs verification. So there are those ones that uh, Posta usually releases through the e-commerce platform. So then the, all the other goods now will be subject to customs verification. So for post parcels, we usually carry out 100% verification. So uh, we usually open the goods after they have arrived. The verification is done together with the, in conjunction with the postal personnel. So we'll open your goods. The customs officer is going to uh, is going to go through your goods to check if they are, if they are uh, fit to be allowed into the country. So if they are fit, then we are going to do assessment of taxes and the package is now going to be released to you after you pay the, all the taxes that are due. So we also find that there are those goods that when we are doing the uh, verification, that maybe they require a permit. So we will contact you, we will tell you the, that your goods require maybe a permit before we clear the goods. So the customer is uh, tasked with maybe looking for the permit and providing the permit to customs so that we can release the goods. And where are they supposed to get the permit from? We actually try to provide guidance. So like for, let's say, uh, for pharmacy and poisons, both for medicaments, so you'll find that we have a government pharmacist who will come and check. But for those where we don't have the officials coming, we, we, we try to liaise with them. We have contact, we try to liaise with them, and we guide you on the process. So we will not leave you out there to go and figure things out on your own. We'll give you a guidance on this permit is required, this is where you can obtain it, or we can liaise with those officials, see if they can come check your goods. So you've said you open the goods. Yes. <laughs> so, you, so you do it one by one. Yes. Is that not tasking? It is not tasking because I think uh, the goods that we receive, they are not uh, usually in very large quantities. So I think we have ample time to go through the verification process and examine all the goods that we receive. And that's why I said, like from the sorting process, there are those that we do not subject to customs verification. So for those ones, they'll be released through the e-commerce platform. But for those ones that are to be subjected to customs verification, then we have to examine them 100%. Yeah. Why would you want to uh, verify through the customs and why are some goods not verified by customs? So like you said, like you were asking before, like is it possible to examine all the goods? So it is actually not possible to do 100% of, of all the goods that we receive. So the ones that we release uh, through the e-commerce platform, they are goods which are deemed to be of low value, below $10, and maybe of a very low weight, like maybe paperweight items. So we will not uh, spend time on those ones. So in, through the sorting process, we are actually able to determine and customs officers have been trained so we, we also do targeting while we are doing the sorting process so we will sort the ones that are to be t to be taken for customs verification mm -hmm. yeah and when verifying what exactly are you guys looking for verification is just a process to determine that what you're actually bringing to the country is fit is legit and it is not going to harm anyone because customs are tasked with keeping our borders safe mm. and are there times where you find something um, is described differently is not what really has been imported and what happens when you find that yeah most of the times uh, we find that there are some goods which have been misdeclared so you find that the item is listed maybe as 
X, Y, Z item, but upon verification now, you're able to determine that this is items, this and that. It is not what has been declared. So we will actually, on the assessment, because we right now we are doing manual assessment, we have not yet fully converted to ICMS, we are still in the piloting phase. So for the manual assessments, we write down what we have verified, what I as the customs officer has seen. This is your good, but it has been declared as A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have heard of cases where people will complain and say that my good has been stuck at customs. Yeah. What happens? So maybe stuck at customs, maybe it is pending verification, like maybe the postal personnel have received it, but they have not yet presented it for verification to customs. So that is one of the reasons why an item could be pending at customs. Another reason, like I said, the item might have been verified and maybe it requires an extra, uh, maybe like a permit. So we will not release the goods until the permit is provided. So your item will be stuck until you maybe provide us the necessary maybe requirements. Mm. Yeah. And um, I've shipped in, let's say, especially what I enjoy shipping in is phone cases. Yeah. <laughs> and you find I have paid for my shipping. I have also paid for the item as well. Yeah. But when I pick it at the post office, I'm being told that I have to pay this amount. Yeah. Why, why am I supposed to? So customs, uh, one of our uh, other responsibilities is also collection of revenue. So like for post parcels, for items above $10, we will charge you taxes. So we are charging you taxes on, on importation. We call them customs duties. Yeah. So that is what we are basically charging you on. And uh, we have POSTA and we have other courier services. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us the difference between the two. So like uh, for the courier services, I'd say that is like a premium service because the courier service maybe handles the shipping, the, the payment of taxes on your behalf and the delivery of goods to you. But for postal services, we just do the delivery of goods from the foreign side to the Kenyan side. So for clearing of goods, and you have to do it yourself, but also Posta, they are trying to adapt a model where they are they do home deliveries, but you have to last with them. Oh really? Yeah. Since when? <laughs> it has to you. There is dust that people are not very aware, but they do actually do home deliveries. They have the guys who do the process for you. So at what point uh, will I tell the people at the poster that just bring my, my whatever to my home or wherever I am? Where, okay, for, for that I think poster now would be in a better place to answer how their home delivery service works. Mm. Yeah. And maybe what are the merits? I know you have mentioned some of them, but what are the merits of me using poster as compared to other uh, courier services so first of all uh, poster i think their charges are actually relatively cheaper than the other courier services yeah so and i don't think they'll charge you any extra charges because they only have a standard fee handling fee of 175 shillings so there are no extra charges besides customs and their delivery handling charges fee mm. yeah I am tempted to give you a scenario that happened to yes, me. Do. <laughs> I I once shipped an item, normally my phone cases, right? Yeah. And um, I could see from the app that my this item has arrived here, it's here, it's here, and I could see it, uh, it has arrived in the country. Yeah. But then I did not get a notification that I need to go pick my item. Nini wa may happen up So in such a scenario, I'd say like maybe the shipper did not include your contact details because uh, POSTA needs to have your contact details to be able to contact you, to tell you that your package has arrived. It's maybe ready for collection at, let's say, City Square. Maybe it's ready for collection at GPU Post Office. It's ready for collection maybe at one of their respective branches. So they actually need to have your contact so that they are able to contact you. Because without a contact detail, now it becomes like, I call it quote-unquote, a parcel that they can't locate the owner. They just have a name but no address. So I think that's one of the cases where it's impossible to 
to for them to be able to contact you and what happens to things that have not been declared been declared in uh, of, if, for, you see for my case mm -hmm. I did I haven't yet received my phone case mm -hmm. but I know it's somewhere at the post office what happens to such goods in the post office so in such a case if you have the tracking number of the package you just come to the post office with the tracking number they'll be able to track for you and they'll tell you your package is here mm -hmm. so maybe now you can collect it from that respective post office now what if I didn't know that I can declare because mm -hmm. I, I didn't know that I, that's why I'm asking mm -hmm. where is my phone case <laughs> what happens to such things do you destroy them no we actually for destruction of goods destruction is a process so we do not determine that this is what we are going to destroy so destruction is a process it's done by the customs enforcement officers mm. and goods for destruction we also have to get the approval from jkia so it is not us to, to determine just because caroline didn't get, come and collect her goods now we are going to destroy them or just because her goods have been here for maybe let's say five months now we can we are going to destroy them we do not actually destroy anyone's goods uh, there is actually a process for destruction of goods so customs we have to follow through that process before we destroy your goods and most likely they'll not be destroyed we only destroy maybe goods that are maybe expired medicine but so those ones maybe yours will be taken for auction again through the same process there is a process for taking all those goods mm. so if it happened like two years ago i cannot go uh, to declare it because maybe it has been auctioned yeah probably it was taken for among those goods taken for auction because exactly. we have to account for all those <laughs> goods like these were goods that to have received the owners didn't come for them this is what we are we are taking to jki for auction sadly um <laughs> <laughs> maybe you have something that i haven't asked and maybe you can want to clarify to our viewers as i look for questions that have been um, sent mm -hmm. You've, you've said that you verify these goods manually. Yeah. And at times I might receive something that is not in a state that I was anticipating it to arrive. Are we safe to say that it was destroyed at your premises through the verification <laughs> process? I think I'd like to assure everyone the verification process is 100% accurate. The verification process is done in the presence of CCTV cameras, and it's not just one. Let me just say that it's not just one. We, the verification where we carry out the verification, the verification area is done under the presence of CCTV cameras. So if you feel this grant of like maybe I feel like uh, Jane took out one of my items, like maybe one piece of my clothing. You are free to come. We can review the footage. You see the verification process. It is actually a very, very, very clear and a very transparent process because, like I said, it's done in conjunction with postal personnel together with the customs officials. And maybe what are the do's and don'ts of shipping? Uh, I want to ship using post. I have never done it before. For uh, example, mm -hmm. what am I supposed to know, and what what am I supposed to do rather, and what am I not supposed to do? So, first of all, the do's, the I'll, I'll start with the don'ts. Do not bring in illegal uh, illegal goods because the customs will seize them. So, for the do's, just follow the necessary procedure. Uh, provide us with an invoice if you can. Uh, so that we are able to at least quicken the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One question I've remembered: Can I send someone take uh, pick for me my item when maybe I'm not around? And what am I supposed to carry with me? So again, that, that uh, would best be answered by the postal personnel because they are the ones who are uh, uh, who have the custody of the goods. So, but I think. Uh, I will give an overview maybe from my main observations from what they do. You can send someone with your national ID, your original ID, together with their original ID, Posta is going to release the goods to them. Uh, alternatively, they have an email address where you can send the authority letter to allow them to release the goods to someone else on your behalf. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, all this you have spoken about, you normally call it post parcels. Yes. Maybe, when I to break down in a layman's language, what is post parcels? 
So basically, post parcels, there are those parcels which have been sent through post, like Posta, like US Post sent to Kenyan Post, maybe it's, uh, France Post, Zimetumwa, again to Kenyan Post. So it's just basically goods that have been sent through the post office, which have used the post office as a medium of uh, delivering those goods. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jen. That was eye-opening and very insightful. I bet uh, you, our viewers, can also accept or agree with me that that was an insightful conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know that was um, quite short, but then very interesting. Um, I think we are done for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are watching us from Zoom, if you are if you are watching us from KRA TV, if you're watching us from YouTube, if you're watching us from Facebook, remember to keep it KRA TV. Also like, share, comment, tell a friend to tell a friend that KRA TV has, uh, that KRA has a television station that is, you can get, you can reach the television station at www.kratv.go.ke. I'll repeat again, www.kratv.go.ke. Thank you so much once again. Until next time, be blessed.